Well, thank you. Yeah, just right. back from his pre-season trip, and obviously with the new season upon us now, looking forward to that challenge. So obviously, last season was a massive triumph. Has that sunk in yet for you and the guys? I think it's had to. Uh, unfortunately, in in this kind of job, and, and maybe more so for myself, you you don't get too long to enjoy it. You know, that's something I spoke about with uh, with Jason and Andrew. You you're very quickly onto the the next part of the job, which we, you know, unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, speaking to players about the futures. Um, you know, that was a couple of days after we got promoted, but. You know, there's a little bit of downtime where you maybe reflect and, and think about the season and in particular, that, probably that final day. Um, but yeah, you're very quickly on to, on to the next challenge and building for a new season uh, in, in a higher league. And how has training gone for you guys since obviously you've been promoted into League Two? It must be, it must have kicked up a notch from last season. Um, I think we pride ourselves on, on the kind of way we work and the intensity that demands we put on the players but you know trying to get that understanding from them and then that buy-in that ultimately it is for us but it is for them first and foremost we want them to improve you know they all want to be in the team they can't all be in the team although be it I'm sure they'll all get an opportunity at some stage um, so it's gone really well you know we, we haven't had as long as I would have liked but again you're not going to find me complaining too much because it means you know we're back in in the league. Uh, but it's been a quick turnaround. Certainly, seeing and hearing some people about how long they've football's been away and they've missed it, it's not quite the case for us. Um, but like I said, we're still looking forward to it. Um, and, you know, it would have just been nice to have a little bit extra time just to work on maybe a few more things and and help the kind of new players. You know, build them relationships on the pitch. We're going to have to do a little bit of that along the way, um, but it's it's been good so far. Great. Um, after the media day on Thursday, the squad travelled to Tenerife. Could you elaborate on the benefits of that journey? Yeah, I mean, a part of it is is a change of scenery. There's a big part of that was about bonding um, and kind of living in each other's pockets almost. We did obviously training. Uh, we ended up having a game which was very last minute. It wasn't planned. We wanted one initially, but couldn't get one. And then the plan, as, as Debbie had mentioned in her interview, was to have a in-house game, sort of the 11 v 11. Um, but then right at the last minute, an opportunity arose, which we took. So it, we, we got a benefit of a game as well while we were out there. Um, it, you know, and like I said, it's, it's a long season ahead. Um, it was just nice to to get that change of scenery. It was a fantastic trip. The facilities were brilliant. Obviously, nice weather, um, which, which always helps when you first wake up in the morning and, and not maybe getting blown around or so, so wet through. Um, but yeah, it, it went really well. I don't think it could have gone much better, to be honest. So really grateful that we had that opportunity and that time together. And hopefully, like I said, just started creating a little bit more understanding about each other and that bond as well as you know, some tough sessions for the players um, and, and the game. So uh, nothing too different than we would have done here in terms of the football side. It certainly wasn't a case of just going out there and, and soaking up the sun. Now leading up the town's trip to Lane Orion, you've had a few games to field unique squads given both first, first team and youth players game time. Any standout performers? Um, I think there's been some good individual performances, but I'm... I'm don't want to sort of really signal anyone out or single anyone out. It's more obviously the team. I think that's always been a big thing for me is, is it's the team. Um, we know we've got one or two players that certainly get more headlines than others, for example. But it's, it's been more about, like I said, trying to get the new players to understand how we'd like to play. And that's the one maybe downside to not having the time. We haven't had a chance to really work on too many more uh, you know, different formations that we might revert to. So we'll have to kind of learn that along the way. Uh, but yeah, overall, just being pleased with, with everybody. I've got a couple of tough decisions to make, maybe not as many just because of some injuries we picked up. That's been the one downside. But again, it's probably inevitable that you get them at some stage. Hopefully we get them out of the way sooner rather than later and they can all get back, um, you know, fit as quick as possible. You mentioned injuries this summer, I know you can elaborate on this one. Um, the only one I'm kind of probably prepared to say is, is Niall Mayer that we we talked about before. Um, he 
he, he won't be fit for this first game. We have got quite a few more, but I've just kind of said that I think you'll have to wait until you see the team sheet Saturday and then probably have an idea of, of the others. You know, I don't want to give too much away, but we, we certainly are missing you know, quite a few players. So we're not as strongest, um, but it's an opportunity for maybe some of the lads. And we've got, like I said, we've got to be prepared to be adaptable and look forward to that first game. You know, if you can't look forward to this one, we're probably going to struggle to, to look forward to any of them. So we'll be backed by a good away following again, sold out. I'm sure Orient fans will turn up in the numbers, so it should be a really good atmosphere. And, you know, hoping that we can put on a good performance. So despite Orient finishing mid-table last year, you must be feeling confident going into the first game of the season with the retained squad and new recruits. Um, I think it's, you're, you're always going into it a little bit uncertain, if I'm honest. I'm pleased with, with the squad. Um, but I've kind of just been saying that there's still a big challenge for a lot of those players. Maybe the National League's been where they've had most of the football. Um, so, as you mentioned, in terms of training and everything, we've got to try and up the level. Uh, and that challenge is there for the players to do that. So, as much as I'm, I'm pleased with... Um, how we built the squad is there is that uncertainty and you know we won't just find that out on Saturday you know that that'll be it take a little bit of time of course it will uh, but Saturday is the first opportunity to get that I think in terms of Orient they'll be expecting to do better this season uh, you know the Richie Wellens went in there last year and I think used the, his time to try and put his stamp and ideas on the team but clearly shaping the squad that he wants as well I'd be surprised if they don't finish higher up the table this season. But, you know, it's the first game, and as I said, looking forward to seeing how we can perform. Now, obviously, I was going to be on the new recruits on Saturday. How have they fitted into life at Bundle Park and the rest of the squad? Yeah, I think they've enjoyed it. Um, I think they've been impressed with the club and impressed with kind of the fans when they played at Bundle Park and also seeing how they travel, um, getting an understanding of how we work, you know, what's expected of them. Certainly in terms of the group, fitted in great, some good characters there. Naturally, some are, are more outgoing than others, but have all sort of seemed like they've settled in very well. Um, and, you know, training-wise, I think most of them find it harder. And that's not just, you know, trying to be clever, as in we, we work really hard and, and just do it for the sake of it. But, as I said, the, the intensity work out and what is expected, I think that's the biggest thing that we... I think or some of the players struggle with initially, but there's no doubt over the course of the season they'll benefit from that. But it's just that initial perhaps shock. And, and the other challenge that we've had, of course, is some of the players have had four weeks off, some have had eight, nine weeks off. Trying to balance that has, has not been the easiest of tasks because you obviously want them to be doing a lot of the training together. Um, so we've, we've done as best. Um, has it been ideal? No. But as I said, we, we will take it because we know what or why we got such a short break. Now, three points away from home would be a dream start. What are your expectations from the players? Just to give everything they've got. And if that's not good enough on the day, then you know, no one will be happy about that. But at the same time, you've got to be you know, honest and realistic in your assessment. So come five o'clock or probably a bit later when it, you digest it, not quite as emotionally at the time. Um, if, as long as I feel that the players gave everything, then I can accept that. Um, you know, we, you never know going into a game whether someone's going to have a really good game, an average game, or maybe they make some mistakes. Uh, but ultimately, the biggest thing is I feel like I've got a group of lads that I'm confident that they will give everything, and that's it has to be the minimum. But at the same time, I also think that you know fans can accept to a degree if they feel that people are giving everything for the club and the shirt. And, you know, we've said we've got a big following. I'm sure they'll be spurring them on. Um, and that's what we ask. If we can play with some quality and, like I said, try and put some parts of us play together that I've seen in pre-season and I know we're capable of, I think we can, you know, cause some problems. But there's no doubt that Orient have got, you know, some good attacking threats themselves that we're going to have to be on as guard against. You mentioned your fans just then. They're excitement towards Saturday is just building and building what has it been like looking at their excitement? Yeah I think just you know obviously we've only had that one home game but you've seen as I said some of the fans travelling even 
you know, out in, in Tenerife, there's some fans you bump into to a few and on even on the plane when we landed, uh, speaking to a, a family then and just wishing you luck and such a good feel factor around the place. Like I said, the season tickets, the shirt sales, everything's, you know, just, I, I don't think there's been certainly a better time in, in recent history, certainly, to be a Grimsby Town fan and, and just involved with the football club all round. So... I think everyone can see that we're making progress. It's important that we try and keep that feeling. Again, not get too emotional about things if it's not quite going the way we'd like initially. Um, but we would all like it to continue to go really well. And you know, seeing a packed out Blundell Park and packed out away terraces would be fantastic. And just finally, any messages for fans that are travelling on Saturday? Well, hopefully they can get there first and foremost with all the things that are going on with strikes and uh, etc. Uh, and the, the cost of travelling at the minute. But no, just safe journey and hope that we can give them a good day, get behind the players. Like I said, all I can promise is that they'll give everything. Uh, but it'd be great if we can you know, get a good result to, uh, to celebrate come five o'clock on Saturday.